I love being a biologist because I get to study the amazing living things that we share this planet with. And in particular, I'm fascinated by herpetology, which might be something you've never heard of until right now. And if that's the case, that's totally fine. Let's start by figuring out what this kind of odd sounding word even means in the first place. The first part of our word, herp, means thing that creeps. And ology just means the study of. So put them together and we get herpetology, the study of things that creep but not just any creepy things. Herpetologists specifically study reptiles and amphibians. Now, the reason that these two pretty different groups of animals are studied together is because the scientist who invented the modern system of classification really just didn't like reptiles and amphibians. Now, personally, I don't think they're creepy, and modern herpetology gives us an opportunity to study some of the most remarkable organisms on the planet. There are over 17,000 species of reptiles and amphibians found throughout the world, and more are being described every year. So, what exactly do herpetologists want to learn? Well, there is no one answer to this question because herpetologists want to learn everything we can about reptiles and amphibians. But normally we start by figuring out what makes a species unique and how that species relates to the rest of its ecosystem. These questions are usually answered through a combination of field work and lab work. Field work usually involves heading out into the wild to observe herps in their natural habitat, which is easier said than done because most reptiles and amphibians are extremely cryptic or difficult to find. All herps are skilled at remaining hidden in their respective environments, and many of them spend the majority of their lives hidden underground. And that is why lab work is so important. By studying reptiles and amphibians in a controlled environment, we can answer questions about them that may have been impossible to observe in the wild. But why do we care about studying reptiles and amphibians? Many ecosystems around the world would not function the same or at all without reptiles and amphibians, because these animals come in such a huge variety of different shapes, sizes, and ecological jobs, or niches. For example, American alligators can be over a thousand pounds. They're these huge apex predators that also dig gator holes, which are used by dozens of other species. Whereas the tiny upland chorus frog plays an important role controlling insect populations in serving as a link between aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. No matter how big or how small, all reptiles and amphibians have an important job to do. And we humans need to do everything we can to make sure they keep doing those jobs. That is conservation keeping Earth's ecosystems healthy for humans and wildlife. To be able to conserve reptiles and amphibians, we have to study how they live and how they interact with the world around them. In other words, we need to study herpetology. Right now, you might be thinking, man, herpetology does sound kind of cool. I wish I could do that. And the good news is you can. Herpetology is as simple as recording observations of reptiles and amphibians that you see in your own local area. Throughout the Herpetology Me curriculum, we will learn all about the differences between reptiles and amphibians, how they relate to their ecosystems, and how we can all take an active role in their conservation. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started by comparing and contrasting these two groups of animals, reptiles and amphibians. Amphibians.